Welcome everybody, I'm Tom Redfern, the Sustainable Ag Director for Rural Action here in the Plains, Ohio, and welcome to our next session. It's going to highlight some school gardening efforts right here in our backyard and Southeast Ohio at the Federal Hawking Local Schools. So with us today we have Keith McCartney. He's a middle school teacher at Federal Hawking for 19 years and He's built one of the biggest school gardens in the country. Plus, we have Lynn Ginter, who's the farm to school coordinator with Federal Hawking. She's got a long experience as a nurse and a health director. And with us also, we have Toby Witchy, who serves as the wellness coordinator with Federal Hawking, and she's also a nurse. So we'll let you guys kick it off. Thank you. It's nice to be with all of you. Um, I'm going to just say a couple things in, um, in terms of housekeeping. We hope this is a conversation. When Toby, Keith, and I, I'm Lynn, started to prepare and think about what to share with you, we thought really we have a lot to say. And um, we wanted it to be more of a conversation of some of the things we've done, some of the struggles we've had, and some of the things that we're looking forward to doing in the future. Um, so that all under the umbrella of educating the next generation of food consumers. When we first started to think about how could Fed Hot contribute to this conference, we knew um, these two school gardens have a lot of traction and have some things to share with others. So that's where we'd like to start. I'll just say that I am the, um, Toby and I came into the school system about the same time. Keith with his 19 years is our senior. Um, and has the most experience with the Fed Hoc system and also with the school gardens. Um, I came into this work in September of 2020. So we were right in the midst of COVID. School did not start that year with the traditional classroom settings at all. Everything was online, um, but I was hired on to a grant that Fed Hoc had submitted in 2019 and received funding for. So I was the one paid position in this USDA implementation grant. I'm still working on, on the grant. We still have a lot of other prongs to the grant, which are pantry development and, a, and a outreach through a summer school bus, food bus program. But today, Toby, Keith, and I are gonna focus on the gardens as that, as a pivotal point for how children learn and how we do reach that next generation of food consumers. So that being said, I think we all know that a healthy, program on farm to school or gardening or agriculture really consists of three pillars and that is some didactic education something that happens in the classroom that is more content or contextual based and then there's also that whole piece of procurement helping our cooks um, and our um, helping bring a distribution center and a, a distribution system to the school that can help us source locally. And then third pillar is gardens, the experiential point. So with not much else said, I'm gonna just ask Keith um, to lead off our conversation. Keith, you've been at Fed Hawk Schools 19 years. How long have you, and you have a, you're a teacher. So you're teaching in the classroom, eight to eight to three. How did you end up with the garden and how did that relationship develop? How long have you been with the Fed Hot Garden? 
and why? Why do you do it? Why do you have this side hustle beside your teaching job? Um, it's kind of a long story, but to, to make it brief, um, I'm always looking for different kinds of projects to do with my students. Um, you know, I've taught math, science, and social studies in, in grades six, seven, and eight. So I've, I, you know, I've worn a lot of hats here at the school. Um, and I'm always looking for fun, interesting ways to teach different things. And uh, there's actually my father-in-law, who is a retired teacher, had a school garden. Um, and I, I actually visited him uh, while I was getting my undergraduate degree. And I just thought, wow, this is a lot of fun. It'd be interesting to do. And uh, some years later, I, I gave it a shot. And that was, uh, well, I think about 11 years ago that, that we started the school garden. And what do you teach? What are the subjects that you teach at Fed Hoc? And what level student? Right now, I'm teaching seventh grade social studies. And I have a science elective class that's a uh, it's a, a, a an engineering kind of base class um, called I, I called it weird science, but it's it's really a STEM engineering class. So the students have different engineering challenges, and they are they they work on those either over a class period or over several class periods. Tell us a little bit about um, the garden when you first assumed lead gardener. Um, what the garden was like um, and had it, it's been in existence. Was it in existence before you arrived and took it over? Or like had it had a legacy, a long life? Uh, it was, it was, it was me and my students who first broke ground for the garden. Um, I, I, uh, I, you know, I thought back on that, that uh, project that my father-in-law had done and I was friends with the uh, math teacher across the hall and I said, you know what, wouldn't it be fun to go outside and just kind of take our classes outside and, 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 and create a school garden? And, uh, you know, in order to do that, um, we came up with some, some good ways to use the garden, teach different math concepts and different science concepts at the same time. So we kind of, we would combine our classes during that, that time period and go out together um, with both our classes and 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 so the students would work on these uh, combined math and science activities together during that during that period. Could you show um, dear slide lady, <laughs> can you show us the next two slides quickly and we'll move through them fast just for all the audience to see. And the first slide um, is talking about school gardens as an essential education strategy for engaging students. And I've already spoken to that, and that's why we're all here gathered together. The next one's actually a slide um, of the Fed Hot Garden. And it's uh, we don't see too much green, but what we're seeing is the big white fence. So tell us about the placement of the garden at Fed Hoc. Where is it situated on the campus? Um, it's situated on the outside of the middle school section. So um, for those who are unfamiliar with uh, our, our, our campus and Stewart, uh, their, their high school was built originally. Um, and then the middle school has moved from kind of downtown Stewart out to the, the location of high school, which is slightly outside of town. Um, and it kind of makes a, a, a kind of a T shape because it's kind of a traditional, not traditional, it's kind of a middle school concept in, in construction. So there's different wings to hold different grade levels. And, and so the, the garden's kind of tucked in between two of those wings, kind of like in a corner. Um, and uh, it's it's uh, probably about 80 by 80 total, like a uh, total, total feet. Um, each bed is probably about 60 feet long and there's four uh, tilled beds and uh, one bed of just uh, raspberries. That's also about 60 feet long, and then some other various plantings in and around that that fence in area. So that's what's tucked behind our our mysterious fence there. Okay, thank you. Well, Toby, let's talk to you a little bit. Tell us about the Amesville Garden. You arrived at the same time I did, I think, in the fall of 2020 as a new position. Talk first about the job you have that you're really hired to do at Amesville, and then. Um, how you acquired the garden as 
a, again, a side hustle, a big project that you're involved with the students and the whole school. Hi, yeah, so again, my name is Toby and I am the wellness coordinator here at Amesville Elementary. And Lynn is correct, um, I am new to the district. I started actually last fall, last September um, 2021. Prior to um, the pandemic, the, the district did not have a, a school nurse or a nurse here in place for um, almost 10 years. So the pandemic was kind of the incentive. I think that they, um, part of the incentive um, to hire uh, me for my position to help navigate things with COVID um, and then provide services to students. So when I arrived, um, I was pleasantly surprised to discover that the school had a small garden um, and it consisted of four raised beds, um, a, a partial fifth bed with strawberries um, and a, a warm digging area. So um, it was kind of my um, sanction <laughs> starting a new position and um, it definitely needed some TLC, but I think the the timing of me coming here and discovering the garden um, really could not have been better. Um, it really just reinforced my belief in the garden and I think what all of us already know to be true about gardening is that um, and in education that just providing a holistic approach to things um, is really important. Um, you know, I can just speak for myself and and then also how when students started to become engaged in the garden, just the mental health benefits, reducing stress. Um, it was a way to connect um, with students um, and for students to connect with each other um, to really feel that sense of purpose, um, staying mindful and present in what we were doing. Um, and then also, um, you know, encouraging that healthy eating and activity um, and self care. So, um, you know, it was really um, the, the highlight of my new role, to be honest with you. <laughs> Thanks, Toby. Uh, you know, as you were talking, and we're all in this session, just starting the session, it all sounds pretty rosy, doesn't it? I mean, you know, it sounds like, hey, we've got a school garden. Keith has one of the biggest gardens in the state. And Toby, you've stumbled into the garden and you I know you have a rich gardening background for yourself, for your home and your family. Um, but it's not always so rosy. What are some of uh, it takes a lot of hands and I'm sure it wears you both of you out at times. So what are some of the obstacles and challenges, Toby, that you have faced with the garden in the short time you've been with it, I'm sure they're proverbial, but tell us about what makes it tough. Yeah, I think um, the biggest and most obvious um, challenge that we have is that the school year um, does not align with the um, gardening year. <laughs> so a lot of the, um, you know, crops and harvest and things that need taken care of during the summer, we're obviously not in session for that. So um, being creative with what we plant and how we plant it, um, has been one of the challenges um, which leads into the second challenge of how we are going to manage those crops and um, I think one of the biggest challenges is um, getting volunteers to help with that during the summer periods so that when we return in the fall um, you know we have things for the students um, and gardens that you can find your vegetables in. <laughs> Um, talk a little bit about more, and I'm going to have um, our slides proceed to the slide that shows a welcome plaque of the of the Amesville Gardens. I think one that the children painted. But talk a little bit about how you did come around the corner, at least last year, on getting volunteers for the summer months. Yeah, so last year we um, had a group of community members. Um, some of them were with the Master Gardening Program. Some of them were with Community Food Initiatives, who has been our biggest supporter. Um, and we signed up for, um, you know, volunteers to come once a week um, to come out and check to see if the gardens need watered or um, weeded. So um, that worked but i think um we could use um a way to get people a little more invested into the garden i think um students and staff 
um, as well. But um, I think we had about 15 volunteers, maybe five were um, very active volunteers. So I think that was um, a challenge, but it got us where we needed to be for the fall. So I am looking to improve on that aspect next year. Thanks for sharing that, because I think that's one of the things, you know, you can each of you can be the leader and the, the captain, but it does take so many hands. Toby, one of the things, talk a little bit more about the communication, and I'm thinking about the journal that's kept in the mailbox at the garden. That's a unique feature at the Amesville Garden, and I think it's a, a simple communication tool in these days of online and email, but how did that get used and explain that? So yeah, um, we do have a mailbox um, that the students painted. It's in the um, garden area, and we just keep a, a simple notebook with a pencil um, inside a Ziploc bag. And so if a volunteer or somebody comes and does something in the garden, whether they plant something in a certain bed or weed a certain garden or see something that needs done, um, you can just jot a quick little note in it. So when the next person visits the garden, they can pull that notebook out and see what the person previous um, or prior to them did. So um, that's been a, um, you know, a fairly simple, effective way to communicate with each other. Nice. Thanks for, you know, and I, I love that because it's, um, it's old school in many ways. You know, it's like back to paper and pencil, but I know that week that I watched the garden last year, I was able to see what the people ahead of me had done and what they thought I should do and when they'd last watered, which was good because, um, you know, if I arrive and I'm not sure, are the, is the topsoil thirsty or is the whole plant thirsty? So thank you. Hey, Keith, let's hear about some of the obstacles and challenges you've had with the high school, the middle school, high school garden. Uh, yeah, um, I've had some 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 really uh, some really similar struggles with uh, getting um, help uh, in the in the off season, um, and uh, you know definitely a big shout out to CFI for for sort of you know rustling up volunteers at, at times to to help out, um, but uh, summer is that special time that uh, definitely is hard to convince people to come to school. Um, so, so I definitely had a hard time getting, getting folks out there for, especially for those demanding tasks like weeding. Um, I've had a lot of, uh, uh, staff members help out, um, with watering. Um, that's been really essential. Um, they, I've set up a, um, a watering system that just works on a, like a mechanical timer through, uh, just, uh, drip irrigation. So anyone can come out there and just turn the dial on the timer and, and and it's like a you know a, a low effort kind of helping things so that that's worked out really well um i like i like the idea of uh of having a log to, to know who who has done what um but i'm still <laughs> i'm still where i'm getting folks out there um and you know the stewart campus is a bit more isolated too um it's it's nice that the that the amsville gardens right right in amsville so so folks can you know, walk over if, if they if they want to. Um, but yeah, I've definitely had had problems with getting help in the summer and help with weeding, um, just a, those more physically demanding and time time demanding tasks. Um, but uh, I've had some staff help me. I've had some students help me. Um, I've had uh, a big help with CFI. Um, so we we'll keep things going that way. Talk a little bit, Keith, about the um, your advisory, and I know that's a full all school um, activity, but you get a chance to pull some students who are interested in the garden through their school day into the activities. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's well, that the advisory is in the morning. We have um, something called exploratory that's during lunch. That's it. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, and so. Uh, in the middle school, uh, well, we have an hour lunch here at school. So in the middle school, the students eat for half an hour, and then we give them a, uh, an, an optional non-academic activity to do. So that's where I get a lot of my gardening help during the school year. Um, so students volunteer uh, to, to be an exploratory, and we go out every day and garden for half an hour a day. And that's, that's really a lot of fun. It's a great way to connect with students. It's a great way to introduce to them to new foods. Um, 
it's it's always good to you know field their questions and and gauge their their prior experience because some of them do come from big gardening families so they really enjoy that and they have a lot to offer and other students you know are just curious um and they're out there like can i eat this <laughs> can i eat that you know so it's a great chance for them to learn to um it's a great way for them to be active and be outside which is what you know a lot of kids like um so yeah that's that's definitely been um the main way during the school year that i've gotten things done out there um that that exploratory time for sure nice yeah and that's nice because i think you know students then are a little more eager they're choosing it <laughs> rather than being drafted <laughs> i always felt as a child i was drafted into my mom's garden yeah um, Something that I want the two of you to talk a little bit more about, we can show the next two slides. One is a, a slide of a kiosk at the Amesville Garden, uh, really giving a shout out to community food initiatives as a primary um, supporter and a, a team that you really lean on for help in the garden. Talk a little bit about what, com what your relationship with community food initiatives is and the partnership. What do they do? Um, for each of you in the garden and with you and the students in the garden. And Keith, can you talk about that first and then we'll hear from Toby? Sure. Um, yeah, Community Food Initiatives, uh, CFI for short, they, they, they are a, an organization that promotes uh, uh, just food for everybody, um, food in communities, um, uh, food for, for students and, and schools, um, they're uh, and they've just been really essential for for my school garden. Um, I can't say enough good things about CFI. Um, they provide material support through uh, through grants um, and and actual physical objects. Um, they provide volunteer support um, uh, with with either people align with that organization or or finding other volunteer groups that that are looking for uh, community service. Um, and they also have uh, a dedicated person just for school gardens and school gardening. And and I've worked with so many wonderful people in that position over the years, and some of them are still my friends um, afterward. Uh, and those people have come to school and and work with the kids and we've done great activities with them making different types of food from the garden um so yes yeah, uh that that support from from cfi is is really is what kept the garden going all these years for sure thanks for thanks for adding that keith toby anything else you would say about cfi um, I, I would just agree with Keith completely. Um, I feel like um, if it were not for CFI, our, our garden would not be um, in existence <laughs> right now. They um, provide a wonderful program for our first grade students called Sprouts. Um, so they do come into the classroom, um, you know, during the colder months every other Tuesday and provide, um, you know, a programming for them. Um, they just bring a lot of energy, a lot of information. It's um, just really refreshing. And um, so we have we have their support through the winter months through that. And then of course, when the weather's nice, um, you know, they meet outside with the students and have different um, projects and plans for the students. So it, it has just been um, a blessing here. Um, you know, and it inspires me and keeps me going with, um, you know, the things that I, I want to do with our students. So it's, it's just been a really good partnership. Great. Thank you. I'm going to have um, for the next slide. I hope I'm not able to see the slides as easily as I hope all of you are. But the next slide shows Toby with a group of students and a big sign that says, thanks, Lada. Earthworks. Talk a little bit about that. I remember that we were trying to bring some extra soil or amendment in, and it seemed like it was a pretty uh, cooperative effort to get all of that done last year. Yeah, it was. Um, so that that is a picture of some of our Sprout students, actually. Um, so we 
the beds, as I mentioned, um, really needed some TLC um, when I arrived and um, were pretty low. Um, so we were able to get a donation from um, someone locally, um, the Lada Earthworks, um, to get the compost here. We had some volunteers from the community come in, help um, to haul it, and students shoveled and filled buckets and helped fill the beds. Um, so it was just a, a really great, um, great activity for all the kids to be involved in and take hands-on part into, um, you know, building our garden. And, you know, Toby, I'll add on to that. Just a thing, uh, something that we did when we reached out to LADA, it's a small company here um, in the Athens area, but um, all they really wanted was publicity and a shout out on social media, right? So, you know, we had 200, probably $300 worth of service um for just the fact that they said hey we're happy to do it let's just put it out there on social media and so that's why and as i recall i think the art students you involved the art class to make the sign so again across the breadth of the school pulling different um teachers and classroom activities into the into that that aspect okay i'm going to um, ask you both to talk a little. So here's where we, I think the audience wants to hear. What are some of the novel ideas? What are some of the fun things that you've done in the garden? You've done through the auspices of the garden that maybe they haven't thought about or haven't heard about in their areas and in their um, literally backyards of their schools. So Keith, talk a little bit about some of the fun things, innovative ideas, things you've done in the garden. It seems like every year we try something a little bit different. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, the, the school garden has started out as like a way to teach different types of math and science concepts, <clears throat> but um, it switched to just a primary food production role. And so in that, we were able to really expand uh, what we grow there and and um, we've, we've made gardening kind of like a two-step process so there's like a, a a summer garden that you know you grow kind of warm season stuff and then in the in the fall during the exploratory time the students plant uh fall vegetables like radishes turnips uh, greens things like that that'll survive well into november um we've we've done uh, uh we've made uh kimchi by fermenting vegetables with, with with a group of students and that was a lot of fun we, we've grown popcorn um, which the students really, they absolutely love the popcorn, just just playing with a little bit of salt on it. They just, yeah, they just fell in love with it. And they, they're like, you can grow popcorn. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, popcorn grows on plants. <laughs> um, we, uh, we get a lot of community support, uh, even outside of CFI, like, um, uh, well, for example, uh, John Gudekans, who has Avalanche Pizza here in Athens, brought in a bunch of different peppers and so we had like this little pepper eating contest. Um, we made salsa with, with with small groups and large groups of students. Um, we've made pasta sauce. Um, we one year we uh, tied the garden to uh, this this project where we um, looked at local food production out like outside of school. So we visited various um, farms um, in the county. Uh, we talked to different food producers. We went to AceNet and visited their food production and, and bottling facility. Um, so that was that was a really fun, immersive year for for the students to tie the garden and to all that. Um, but it's you know it's 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 I'm always looking for different opportunities, different connections to make with people, um, and and you know that it's it's just it's so much fun to try different things. Thanks, Keith. You know, and I, I think as you um, say that, I think every age, whether you're two, three, 30, 40, 50, 60, you like the novel. And so that's one of the fun things I hear you saying, and I've seen both of you do. Toby, you did some novel things, even with your first year with the garden. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you have done that are interesting and, again, unique and novel. Sure, yeah. So, um, yeah, my time was um, 
more limited um, than I, um, you know, had hoped uh, last year with the garden, but I think each year just planning to expand on that and making it more um, a part of something we do here every day. Um, so one of the ways that I, um, I guess, kind of broke ground to get into the garden was, um, you know, we have um, different pockets of students here. And so one of the best ways that I found um, to get into the garden was um, to pull some students who maybe were having some um, needed some behavior support. Um, so I had a couple um, students um, who needed to burn some extra energy. So um, we had some fun um, tomato throwing contests um, at the end of the season. Um, you know, helping to chop and turn compost, just burning some extra energy. Um, so that came, you know, to be a weekly activity with um, a particular student and, um, you know, really provided an outlet um, in between classroom time. Um, and then also um, a pocket of students who really needed some social support um, to, to build, um, you know, some team building um, with some sixth grade students. So we had um, some community members come help construct two new raised beds this year. Um, so that was wonderful to have um, those students out there using saws and power tools and, um, you know, building building the beds. Um, so um, besides the behavior support, um, looking to students who need physical support, um, you know, we, uh, one student who has um, some limited use of the left side of her body um, due, due to, um, you know, um, a condition that was present at birth, um, she has been my, my watering girl. So um, just working a lot with um, getting mobility and strength and carrying water pitchers and, um, you know, really focusing on getting mobility in that left side. Um, so it's kind of been like a type of physical therapy for her. Um, and then um, another pocket of students um, that I've worked with are some students with sensory issues. And so um, this has definitely been, um, you know, kind of a fun and challenging way um, for me um, to figure out ways to get those students involved um, in the sense that um, you know, they do have a lot of sensory issues and the garden is full of, um, you know, those senses. So um, even walking through the grass to get to the garden because the grass is wet. So we, we've made cardboard paths where we um, hopscotch, hopscotch over cardboard to get to the garden. And so each week working on how we can get there and how much do we need to hopscotch to get there? And can we take a couple steps without needing that? And so that's just been really exciting um, and challenging for me. Um, so I think those are just some, you know, individual things I can think of. But then as far as classroom projects, um, so, um, one of the biggest things I think we did was our lettuce growing last year. Um, we grew lettuce in our raised beds and included that in our school lunch. And um, beyond that, we also grew, um, that was last year. So this year in the fall, we grew radishes um, and the students were so proud. Um, I have not seen so many students eat their salad on their lunch tray, but just by adding the, the little bit of radish into the salad mix and them knowing that that was their radishes um, really encouraged them to eat their salad and know that the whole school was eating their radishes. So um, that was really fun. Um, we dehydrated dill, um, made pickles, um, you know, did some things with um, different herbs. Um, then uh, Rural Action um, was a great support. Um, they dehydrated some apples for us. So we had a taste test um, every lunch period um, one day when the students came in. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and then I think finally, um, the loofah sponges were a big hit. Um, and so Lynn provided us with the, the seed starts for those and we grew loofah um, vertically along our fence line. 
um, and had someone um, come in locally who, um, you know, that's her expertise and show us how to harvest them and um, make loofah sponges. So um, we've, we've done a lot of fun things um, and I just hope to keep growing on that. Thanks, Toby. Wow, you have done a lot of interesting things. Talk a little bit about the Paula and the Pandemic um, project that you did. You didn't mention that, and I want everyone to hear a little bit more about it. Yeah, so um, I think that was kind of my first garden project, actually. Um, so I um, purchased a book. Um, it's called Paula and the Pandemic, and it really talked about how it is important, um, you know, when there's a lot of things going on in life, um, you know, whether that's, um, you know, physical stressors or mental stressors to be taking care of ourselves. Um, and so the book compared our bodies to planting a seed and sprouting and growing that um, and nurturing that seed. So, um, so I think that was kind of like my big, big kickoff. We read, read the book and then um, grew the, the lettuce beds and um, some tomatoes and zucchini um, in an indoor bed that we started and we ended up moving it outside um, in the warmer weather, um, but really just focusing about nurturing ourselves and taking care of ourselves through healthy eating and activity and um, de-stressing. Toby, let me poke at one thing that you said, and um, you're the school nurse, so you have every student as your as your student. Um, how how did you choose the classroom? Or you said class, but you really don't have a classroom that you enter and like, hey, these are my 20 kids. So how did you choose the the teacher or the group of students to work with on that project? Well. Um, you know, I think the teachers kind of chose me, maybe. <laughs> um, you know, we have, um, you know, some um, teachers who are more invested, I think, in um, gardening or have that background. Um, so, um, you know, I don't even really recall how that, that kind of came about with that age group, but, um, you know, there was an interest there. And, and that is one thing I think, you know, I would like to work on expanding um, our people, teachers, students who don't have that background or don't have that interest that we can expose more students um, and more staff to that opportunity. Um, so that's definitely something that, you know, I um, have as a goal. Thank you. Thanks. Keith, at the middle school, high school, and probably more high school, I'm guessing there's an agriculture um, program, FFA. And mm -hmm. I don't think I've said this out loud to all of this, our listening, but we are a rural district. Southeast Ohio, Tom mentioned that we're huge. Um, so there's a lot of livestock and some traditional agriculture in terms of soybean, corn, and wheat. But how do you work with the um, agriculture, the FFA, the ag ed um, faculty here at Fed Hoc? Um, Scott and Joanne Pfeiffer, we have a, a great husband and wife <laughs> uh, uh, ag, ag teacher partnership. Uh, um, they've been really supportive. Um, I've worked with them on, on uh, uh, kind of restoring the greenhouse and, and, and they've helped with raising uh, different plants. Um, Joanne uh, has brought her classes out to the school garden to, to both work and to use as a teaching tool. Um, and they also have brought out um, and, and raised uh, honeybees on the campus. And that's that's been a real treat. Um, so uh, yeah, they're, they're really supportive. Um, I think they have a, a bit of a limit because part of their FFA program is for students to garden at home. So I, I think, you know, making the students garden twice is a bit of a stretch, but they they like they'll bring classes out when they can and that's and 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 all of the other things I mentioned so they're they're really supportive they like the garden um yeah so they've been they've been good good partners in all of this for sure thank you great well we've talked about I've heard you both talk about involving faculty across the the breadth bandwidth of the school um and I know that many garden school gardens have art teachers that bring the students out, those kinds of things. I was especially enjoyed, Toby, your talk about using the 
garden as an energy burner. So I'm just going to share out loud with the audience. I think that's one of the privileges, you know, of having a school garden. We know it on one level, but counselors, um, Toby, you did, um, you pointed out really both the, the physical, the social, the child that just needs energy burning or needs isn't going to be settled into a classroom that day using the garden as a distraction and a diversion for that child so that the success of the other 15 18 children in the classroom can carry on so i think that's you know i just wanted to outline that or highlight that and recap that because i think that is so so um poignant you know it, it's important to um and for our counselors the school nurse that you are to, um, to pull that forward, the garden is a, a venue for so many opportunities, not just the eating and the growing, but to let those children experience it. And your your example of using the child that probably doesn't want to touch that wet grass, using that as a sensory um, invigorator, a challenge for that child. It's, it's, it's spectacular to hear it used that way. Um, any other things that you can think of across the way that you've used the garden for or involved others? Well, I just think, um, you know, personally, I I just see the garden as a infectious, contagious, um, on a positive note, <laughs> place to be. Um, you know, we have when students are out there working, um, you know, it's kind of on the side of the building where kids can see out their window, not in a distracting way, but, you know, or or there are other students on the playground. And when they see students in the garden, they come visit and they want to know what you're doing and what it's all about. And so, um, you know, it's just, um, something that I think students are naturally drawn to and curious about. And, um, you know, some of the projects, even when CFI has been here and done a project, um, you know, I've had a teacher um, or teachers approach me later, like, hey, what were they doing, you know, with that compost when they were doing the compost kitchen? What were they doing out there? And can you offer that to my students? And so I think just being um, present and letting people see what gardening can be and is, um, I think is just a huge um, shout out to the garden itself. Um, you know, so it's, I think that's just been a, another really, um, you know, big positive of being in the garden. Thank you. I'll also add on um, not Keith's garden is Keith, you mentioned it. It's out in actually the middle of nowhere, which is a, which is a great place to have middle school and high school students for seven hours a day. Um, but Toby, your garden's in the middle of a little community and just a moment um, share the kiosk and letting people because people walk by your garden that aren't aren't teachers or students. So you use a kiosk then to make some posters or share with the community what's going on? Yeah, we do. Um, so we try to highlight different things that we're doing um, outside um, so that people, um, you know, can feel a part of what is going on in the garden. Um, and we're also hoping to expand on that this year. Um, to provide a sort of kiosk um, area inside the school right when you exit to go out toward the playground and garden area so that students um, and teachers will have the opportunity to see different activities that are available in the garden and can pull a little slip and claim something that they want to do in the garden um, so um, you know again that kind of that positive peer pressure um, you know what can we do what um, you know, how can we be a part of the garden? So I think that um, is just really um, exciting. Thank you. And I think something that the audience might not know is that kiosk is going to be right outside the doors where everyone comes and goes for their recesses. Is that right? So um, what we all know as we grow into our careers, it's timing, timing, timing. And so the, the teachers, the um, aides, everyone comes buy that space on their way out to recess. And I, I'm looking forward to that effort too. I think it'll be a great expansion of uh, and a, a simple, again, back to like the, the paper and the mailbox. It's a simple, it's a, it's present here and now, oh, we're going outside today. If I can take two or three kids up to the garden, here's, a, here's some things we can do there. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I wanna turn now and if um, we can go to the final slide 
in the presentation. We'll slip by a couple, but not much loss. We've talked about some of the things, the Sprouts program that um, is offered by CFI and led by CFI instructors at the Amesville School. Let's spend the rest of our time together. What are your dreams? What do you, what do you you've, Toby and Keith both mentioned some things you'd like to do. Um, what are some of the really things that are on your to-do list for this year that are new and different or into the next couple years? What would you like to see change in your garden or growth in the garden? Keith, you want to start? Sure. Um, uh, you know, I have so many ideas about the garden. Um, besides just being a better gardener, <laughs> um, I, I would I would like to uh, to add more um, edible perennial plants. Um, we've we've done a few shrubs, um, including like we have a really good fig tree out there right now. Um, I uh, I, went, I attended a workshop in the fall that allowed me to set up. Um, uh, uh, some some oyster mushroom cultivation, so I set that up out in the school garden. Um, we, well, I and um, the track and cross country coach have been working on kind of a edible tree trail um, that kind of goes along. We have a we have a cross country course here that we have we host different meets. So I got the idea of maybe adding some some trees and shrubs along that that path that can also serve as, as as a source of food and and a source of um, education for students. Um, so we are actively working on that. I already have some uh, some persimmon trees in place and part of that. Um, I'm looking into adding um, uh, more upper class students in, into working in the garden because uh, we you know we have a we have some requirements for graduation that are, you know, a little bit beyond just the minimum state standard. So one of those is what we call uh, citizenship points, and so we encourage students to participate in in school and outside of school activities, and in doing so, they earn these points towards graduation. So I'm I'm working with the um, the upper class advisors to to encourage their students to participate and work in the garden and earn some some of those citizenship points that way. So th those are things I'm looking at right now. Great. Toby, how about you? What are you what are some of the schemes and dreams that you have for the Amesville Garden? Yeah, um I would like to I guess expand on Keith's thought on the, you know, citizenship points. We did put in a new pollinator bed this year, so we had a high school student come over um, and plow the area up for us and um, prep the area. So I think, um, you know, I would like to see that um, be a part of, you know, a yearly um, project, um, projects that we have available for students at the high school level, um, you know, whether, um, you know, it's, you know, manual things like that, or if it's it's just helping to work with younger students and what they have learned, um, perhaps students who are interested in being teachers or, um, you know, working with kids in their adult lives that um, they can come over and help um, co-teach and co-instruct our students. Um, so I, I think that would be a, a great asset to have. Um, the other thing that um, I'm really interested in is um, getting getting kids outdoors and near the garden more. Um, so. Um, I often like to take my lunch break um, sitting in the garden or by the garden. So I would love to see um, some tables available up there so that perhaps, um, you know, once a week students in different grade levels have the choice to eat outside, um, eat their lunch outside. Um, and then um, I guess lots of ideas, but I think the, the other one that's really standing out to me is, um, you know, how how much participation increased in um, eating their salads, um, you know, the day that we did the the radishes um, in. So I would really like to partner with um, a local farmer um, to supply us and with lettuces and things of that sort. So we could have a salad bar that's perhaps offered maybe even daily um, to the students, um, but maybe on our salad bar we have a featured item like the radishes that came from our garden or the peppers that came from our garden. Um, so it's kind of a cooperative effort um, between between our local farmers and then something that we can, you know, own as our own as well. 
Nice. Yeah, and that, that does sound like a great hitchhiking I idea, something that, you know, again, it's creating that a partnership with a local farmer and using what's already at the school. Um, and I think we all know through COVID that it slowed us down in some ways. And I know, Keith, at the middle school, high school, the salad bar actually went away um, because we weren't sure about the foodborne action of COVID and the virus and those kinds of things. Has it come back and what any other ideas that either of you have? And we'll see if that, there's time for some chat. I think we've got about six or seven minutes here. So if we wanna open up chat room and see if there are any questions for either of you, we can do that at this time. But um, Keith, anything new, anything different? I think the school, um, your school is still serving salads as a plated salad, correct? Not, no salad bar yet. That is correct. Um, and I haven't inquired about the future of the salad bar. Um, I mean, I, as far as I know, the infrastructure is there. So, um, yeah, I, I actually, I should follow up on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll talk. We we have a new we have new management in our in our kitchen, so I'll 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 check. I know uh, our new kitchen manager has been really supportive of using uh, garden produce this year, but I had not talked about the salad bar, so I'll, I'll check sure. into that. Okay. Well, I'll add one other thing, and I'm not sure if there's anything coming up through the chat. Um, Tom, are you are you able to get to the chat or see if there are any questions coming up? I sure am, and we have like four or five real good questions okay tackle them okay so the first one is for keith did the kids eat the kimchi at the middle school high school <laughs> they did they did that they had uh you know a few didn't try it you know um i think i think you know the the smell can be uh, a little discouraging for some folks um, but most of the kids were willing to give it a shot, and and they they liked they liked how you know they liked the the flavor and the texture of it. So that, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. Nice. Plus, we have a question about the hot pepper eating contest. How did that go over? That was incredibly popular. Um, I <laughs> I made sure I got like per, uh, per, permission slips from 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 home to, to make sure that their the, the kids had permission to try, try the peppers because some of them were pretty spicy um but we it was it was it was a lot of fun it was it was it was really just really popular with the kids you know the, even the ones that weren't participating wanted to be there you know to, to watch their classmates squirm um so yeah that was that was a whole lot of fun awesome so here's my favorite question and i know the answer who is the local loofah expert rhonda clark is who you brought in is that right toby that's correct yeah rhonda clark she has a farm and grows many things besides loofah but she has done that and uh, then she's um she was really expert on how long to let them dry and what the skin feels like when they crackle and those kinds of things. So she's a person that lives in the community. Her farm is outside about a mile and a half from the Amesville Garden. Anything else to add on that, Toby? Oh, it, I thought it was really, really awesome. Um, you know, it inspired me and I grew some in my home garden this year and got about 20 myself. So I'm even thinking like, this is going to be a fundraiser we're going to do. <laughs> 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 the school bazaar now has loof, a loofah station. <laughs> awesome. Just a shout out to Rhonda Clark. If people are in the area, they can see her at the Athens Farmer's Market. Her farm is Blackberry Sage Farm. So check her out if you're in the area. Then we have a question. So here's a good question for Keith. How's it work with your timing? Do you get paid or is this something you do purely as a volunteer? Uh, I've received no compensation for, for this project. Um, that's that's. I mean, 
it's not something I really ever sought out either. Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of like the volunteer aspect of it. Um, so yeah, it's 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 just uh, something I do. And I, this the last two summers I've been able to be out there a lot because my oldest son, he's a student at the high school and he's been doing cross country conditioning. So that's been my my excuse to drive out to Stewart and you know spend an hour every evening in the garden. So that that's worked out too. Thank you for your service, Keith. Now we have a question about deer. What do you guys do about deer? Especially Keith. Toby, you want to go first? Tail deer, do you get them in your garden at the school? Is it fenced? Um, our garden has that that white fence, and I, I think that since it's um, opaque, you know, they're really discouraged. I think they only jump over fences that they can see on either side of. Um, so that I haven't had deer problems, but definitely rabbits and um, uh, some mystery creature that uh, strangely had dug up all of my sunflower seeds. Like it, it went through and systematically dug them all up after I planted them twice. Um, and I noticed I was out in the garden this past week and there was uh, rodents had stripped the bark off the base of my fig tree, which I was found kind of curious because I never noticed that before. Always something. So I think that pretty much sums it up for the questions in the chat. Well, thanks, Tom. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Keith and Toby, for sharing your experiences. I hope everyone's enjoyed the session. I learned a couple new things as I listened in. Um, and we will join all of you in other sessions of the workshop. Thank you and have a good lunch break.